Hi, uh, the next notebook we're going to work with is on clustering. Uh, in this uh, notebook, we're going to work on a data set about houses in California. We're actually also going to discover a really cool way to visualize things on a map, um, like a cool visualization like this one here. Um, and we're going to run a few clustering algorithms on our data. Uh, so one quick note before we keep going with this uh, notebook, I'm actually going to avoid executing uh, cells like this where I am plotting them on uh, the map. Uh, this is actually using the Vega Lite package to generate these really cool plots. Um, but the reason I'm doing so is because, like, first of all, we're actually uh, plotting a lot of uh, information. That's about 20,000 houses that uh, we're plotting, uh, so these dots. And um, this is going to take about a minute or two, I think, on average, for these uh, plots to finish generating. So I'm trying to just save a little bit of time here not to keep you waiting. So I might just go through them and show you the figure instead of executing the figure on the spot. All right, so now we're going to do, we're going to actually, um, let's let's go ahead and get the package that, packages that we're going to work with and then get the data set that we're going to work with. Um, you, you've seen these before in the uh, data notebook or how to read and download uh, data. Uh, and then the next thing I wanted to give you an idea about is what the column names are going to be. Uh, so these are the information we have about these houses. Uh, so the latitude and the longitude is essentially what we're going to use for our clustering uh, methods. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to run this cell here, which I'm not actually, sorry, I'm not going to run just to show you the result of that cell. Uh, what's happening here is that we're loading the JSON file of a California shape. Uh, if you actually want to use this package to do other kinds of map plotting, all you have to do or all you have to have is just the JSON uh, file of um, the country that you're trying to plot, the state that you're trying to plot, whatever you're actually trying to uh, plot here. So if you do just a Google search on a JSON, like all I did here is JSON California counties and I found multiple files for download. All right, so here um, I'm plotting. Um, uh, so all of this is really just plotting the background in terms of um, black background and the, the state. And all of this here is trying to plot the actual uh, scatter plot, uh, but uh, showing a color that is equivalent, that it's actually um, mapping to the median house value in a specific latitude and longitude. So as you can see, it all makes sense. Uh, more expensive houses are more closer uh, to the water. Uh, Southern California also closer to the water. And um, houses on the inside are a little cheaper. Uh, so another thing you could do here is instead of creating kind of a heat map on what's going on here, is you could do some some sort of um, bucketing of uh, the houses in terms of prices. So I'm just going to bucket houses based on 50K. Uh, so here um, I'm bucketing based on 50K. Uh, and what I will end up having is about 10 buckets just because um, I think the maximum is about 500,000. Um, uh, the cost, which is kind of interesting. I think this data is a little outdated because Preston, California is probably more expensive. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do the bucketing here and then we're going to um, insert a column to our houses data frame here and call it um, C price. So that's another way. This is another thing you could learn here is to see how uh, we are inserting a new column to our data frame here. Uh, and then the prices now were no longer the actual median prices. They're just based on the bucket uh, that the house fell in. Uh, so here uh, we will see that. Um, so first of all, like this is the orange. So there's a lot of orange inside, uh, but there's more like green and yellow and purple on the outside, which again makes sense. The higher the cluster or the higher the uh, bucket number here is uh, means that the price was actually originally higher. Uh, so the first, getting back to the clustering part, the first thing we will do here is k-means clustering. Uh, so for k-means clustering, what I will do is get uh, the latitude and longitude data of uh, these houses, and then I will run um, k-means on them. So what I'm doing here with x, x is here actually um, 
a data frame stole. So like, I think if I do, let's see if this, ooh. Um, yeah, so X is a data frame here. And to be able to pass it to k-means, I just wanted to make it a matrix. And another thing that k-means expects is very similar to something we've seen in PCA in the previous notebook, where we wanted uh, things to be, um, every instance to be a column. So actually, if I copy this, just to show you what this is going to look like. Um, sorry, this, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just going to be a matrix of each column is going to have the latitude and longitude of that uh, specific house. Um, and then the next thing we'll do is once we found the k-means, we're also going to insert, like we're running a 10 uh, clustering, we're trying to create 10 clusters, uh, something, the number, honestly, I just thought 10 could be a reasonable number to use here, uh, based on seeing the data. And uh, when I actually uh, do the k-means clustering, I end up also inserting it back to uh, the house's data frame. So if I run this, you will see that we've added a data frame or we've added cluster 10 here, which is a new column name of the assignments of these clusters. Um, we will do the same thing here, except that I'm not gonna run again the cell. Uh, so running the cell will generate the clusters that we've um, calcula calculated via k-means. Um, one thing to notice here is that k-means, usually what it does is that it tries to find like a mean average of every cluster. So like um, this, every dot, like it, it creates these 10 mean values and then it creates clusters around them. And so one thing I immediately noticed here is that obviously there's no immediate mapping between here and there. And that, I mean, it makes sense because what, what Kamin is trying to optimize for here is just creating kind of um, uh, 10 um, means in the data so that um, the points are closest to them. Uh, but in terms of pricing, um, usually we know there's kind of a relationship between where is the house located and its price. But another thing we don't think about when we're thinking where does where is the house located? A lot of times, not just based on neighborhood, and and this is a proof that it's not primary, like it's not just neighborhood. There's a lot more going on, uh, closeness to um, uh, the water, or maybe closeness to a city, or closeness to a downtown, closeness to a bus stop. Anything like that would increase the house price. Uh, so it's not really just terms in terms of where the house is located in terms of neighborhood. It's more than that so one that's that's one one thing to uh immediately notice out of this plot and this idea will become clearer and clearer as we use more clustering methods the next method we will use is k midoids and here what we are doing instead of passing um so initially we've passed uh the latitude and longitude data for the k-means um for the k-means algorithm. Here, what we actually will pass is, again, a distance matrix like we saw in uh, the umap function in um, uh, the dimensionality reduction notebook. And here, we're again passing about, uh, saying, 10 clusters and uh, creating a new data frame or inserting a new column to the existing data frame uh, where the midoid center will be the assignment of this clustering uh, algorithm. So this is currently running. And what we will see later, and again, I'm not gonna run this cell, is very similar pattern so far. Like it's all based on geographical location, trying to separate uh, these clusters. And it's not really, um, again, one thing you can deduce out of this data is that there's no immediate one-to-one -one mapping between where is a house located based on neighborhood uh, and its uh, actual uh, location. Maybe um, maybe if the data was maybe smaller in like a smaller, smaller um, maybe county or maybe um, a specific city, we could start seeing neighborhood kind of separation based on price. Uh, neighborhood separation correlated highly with price separation. But I think seeing it on a state scale, you could immediately see it's not as simple as just that. 
All right, so the next thing is hierarchical clustering, and here we're going to use the H clust um, um, function. And I should have mentioned all of these. So uh, so far, we're we're basically using the clustering.jl package. Uh, this is really the package you want to look at if you're uh, if you want to perform clustering um, methods on your data. Um, moving on, we were doing hierarchical clustering and here let me run this um, so what we're doing again something super similar we're passing the D matrix instead here uh, as a distance matrix and then uh, we are forming um, kind of the tree based on how hierarchical clustering is trying to do like kind of a tree on uh, where things are located in terms of a clustering tree if you want to think about it and once we found uh, the actual um, assignments, we are going to pass them as uh, HCLUST. Again, we're creating a new data frame that will have these values. Uh, here, I think the syntax is a little different. We don't have L.assignments, we just have the actual uh, numbers. So while this is running, well, it finished running, so these are the cluster, HCLUST clusters, so we have a new um, um, column here. Again, if you look at this data, you will find out that hierarchically most of these ended up together. Um, there's a few points here that end up forming very tiny little clusters by themselves. And we would probably think of these as outliers. Uh, but again, there's nothing to immediately say. There's something about neighborhood immediately implying the price of a house. Uh, the final method I think we will cover here is dbscan. And I think dbscan actually generates one of the most interesting um, things or clustering. So let's see how this is going to work. So again, we're I, I think, yeah, we're creating a distance matrix, which I think we already had, but oh, we're creating it again, but that's no problem. Um, let's see. Yeah, Euclidean R square, yeah. It doesn't make that much of a difference, to be honest. Um, OK, so dbscan, um, we pass just um, the matrix in terms of distances. Um, the 0 0.05 and 10 here are really so OK. So if you've worked with dbscan before, uh, you know there's, first of all, you're trying to pass, um, you're trying to find kind of points that are um, like within a certain neighborhood or like within a certain distance, you would think that these nodes are in the same cluster. So that's kind of a threshold of how far um, a node could be from another node and still kind of uh, be in the same cluster. And then I think 10 is the number of, yeah, the query radius. So uh, 10 is essentially for every point you're looking at, like what are the 10 points around it that are uh, closest to it. So these are the points, um, these are the two parameters you want to look at. And again, all of these parameters depend on like what kind of data or what kind of problem you're trying to solve. Uh, but one thing you want to notice here is that we're not actually passing a number of clusters. You can't like you can't do it here. Uh, so um, you could just come up with reasonable numbers for these thresholds and the number of uh, points to query. Um, okay, so the unique clusters here actually were 15. And if we end up inserting these numbers here, so we will have a new um, column called dbscan clusters three, I think. I don't know why three, but um, oh, because I had, I think I was playing around with this data before and um, I have already had two other kinds of parameters. Uh, but yeah, you can just decide on the column name here and insert it to your data frame. And so looking at the clustering of this algorithm is actually pretty interesting. Kind of got Southern California all together and uh, kind of got this area together with this area here. Uh, so I would say like that's pretty interesting in terms of like this method is looking at the radi radii of like the radius between a point and like the neighboring points around it. And I would think that this was one of the most interesting clusterings on this data. Uh, so far, but again, it's not immediately mapping. It's probably like closest in terms of mapping back to this original data set here. Uh, but again, there's like always this super like more expensive um, houses on um, closer to the water. So 
Uh, this is going to be really hard for any clustering algorithm to immediately detect, oh, like these things on the water are uh, together. Uh, so I guess one conclusion I would take out of this notebook is that uh, doing a clustering on geographical locations is not necessarily um, is not necessarily uh, mapping immediately to the prices of these houses. So prices of houses is not just about neighborhood, it could be about many other factors. Uh, so that's probably the most interesting thing to take out of this notebook. And I hope that by now, after finishing this notebook, you can run all of these clustering algorithms on your data and find out clusters in your data that are close to each other, whether it's geom geometrically or whether uh, you're trying to do other kinds of uh, clustering on your data. And we'll meet again in the next notebook that's going to be about classification.